All right, this is Daniel with AngryWeb.net, and today I am here with comic book, TV, and now game legend, <laughs> Paul Dini. How are you doing tonight, sir? Great, Daniel. How about yourself? I am doing wonderful. Uh, it's actually nice to be here. We are here at the GameStop in West Hollywood for the launch of Arkham City, the new Batman game coming out. Uh, this has been a buzz since the last game came out. It's yeah. been a huge game. So uh, let's see here. Why don't we start talking about the game a little bit? Um, okay. How did you approach this differently from Arkham Asylum, first of all? Well, it's a much bigger um, uh, playground. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're taking him out of a closed environment like, uh, like the Insane Asylum and letting him run around uh, this big chunk of ruined Gotham City. More than anything... I approach this as the idea, like, I am Batman, and I am flying around the city at night, and this is the Gotham I've always wanted to visit. Uh -huh. And I think a lot of gamers will just want to just put themselves in Batman or even Catwoman's uh, shoes and just investigate the city. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are missions to go on and people to rescue and things like that, uh -huh. but it's just a tremendous environment. All right, so like you said, this is a much bigger game than the first yeah. one. I, I believe even the, the gameplay time is what like almost twice as long. So. Yeah, about 40 hours. Yeah, so were there uh, story elements, characters, or plot lines that you wanted to fit into the first game that you weren't able to get into it that you kind of moved over to this one? Not really, because we were dealing with everything. We, we looked at, at you know being trapped in an insane asylum, and what can we throw people in this environment? You know, And there was, it was such a rich environment, because in the Arkhamverse, uh, as we call it, uh, um, world, Arkham Asylum was many different things before it was an asylum, so if we wanted to bring in something from a previous era, we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, we were While we were working on the first um, game, we were thinking, boy, for a second game, we've got to turn Batman loose in Gotham, and we'd like to bring in this and this and this. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the ideas from those very early meetings, we wound up putting in, in the game. Mm -hmm. Now, you, uh, between the games, we yes. bridge the stories with a comic book, and sure. you've been writing comic books for a long time. Um, how does this version of Batman the character compare to the comic book versions? Well, I try to make them blend as seamlessly as possible. I think when I, when I write Batman, I go to a very, what I like to think is a very classic vision of the character. It may not be as up to date as everything that's going on this month or next month in the continuity books, but I think it's what pretty much what everybody thinks of when they think of Batman and his world. So I figured, you know, taking what I what I did from Arkham Asylum, the game, and then infusing a little bit of the animated series, maybe a little bit of that weird skew in animation sensibility or sense of humor, and then, you know, with, with what we had created for the first game, I, I used that to fuel the story mm -hmm. and create a story that, that you could really stand on its own as an enjoyable Batman adventure, but would have seeded within it little clues, little indications of what was going to happen in the game. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be really overt about it, but I think once people play through the game and go back and read the graphic novel, they'll go, oh, that's what he meant. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, hey, look, this character is lurking around in the background. Or there are certain little winks and clues, as there always are in everything I write, too, uh -huh. to get the more astute um, readers. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, your writing needs no help from any external sources, but Christopher Nolan's done something with Batman that we really haven't seen in film before. Right. Were there any elements that you saw that he did that you wanted to incorporate into this game, or is this just completely original, completely separate? Well, I, I think in, in rather than specifics, there's just a sort of a, like an honesty of tone that I adhere to and that I think Christopher Nolan adheres to in his films. Like, he really believes in the integrity of the character, and he believes in a world that would accommodate his version of the character, mm -hmm. as do I. I don't want to make the world too cartoony in, in the Arkham world. I don't want to maybe get as loopy as I would in some of the, uh, the cartoon uh, episodes or in, even in some of the comics, but I do try and adhere to the reality of Batman just as, as, uh, as seriously as I think Christopher Nolan adheres to the seriousness of him in his world. Mm -hmm. And I think if you take the character seriously within that realm... You don't have him poking fun at himself, and I think that's where the idea of Batman begins to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, there's there's been a lot of games out there, and this is, I think, the first one that real comic book fans were able to grasp onto and enjoy. So, um, let's see. Uh, does the story for Arkham City leave room for a third installment? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Simple, huh? Yeah. Well, no one's <laughs> talked to me about a third installment. I think everybody wants to do a third installment. Mm -hmm. But I think um, everybody's just sort of waiting to see what happens and maybe how this shakes down, and uh, then we'll all see uh, maybe later. Mm -hmm. Now, um, well, let's talk about a comic books here for a little bit, yeah. and uh, we won't keep you much longer, but how does the writing for TV and comic books and now games, how does it differentiate in your process? Well, um, writing in comic books, you really the writer really has to be the director and really call a lot of the shots and uh, a lot of the scene descriptions and everything, whereas in uh, film... 
a lot of that is a director's job. You know, you write in very minimalistic form. But in uh, games, so games are kind of a hybrid of that. I have to be more descriptive than if I was writing a screenplay. Um, I also have to rewrite a lot of the same action over and over again to, uh, you know, to accommodate the choices the gamer might make. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to make them too, uh, too over, over, I don't want to, you know, overwhelm the script with a lot of description, but I do have to be thorough. So mm-hmm. it's like Batman runs down the alley, um, he runs right, three Joker thugs are waiting for him. Uh-huh. Batman runs down the alley, he turns left, there's a cop. Batman come this way, you know, and then I have to write the responses that Batman will have to, you know, say to him and things mm-hmm. like that. So, you know, I'm not, but I'm not going to write Batman runs down a dark shadowy alley. It's dark shadowy. Of course, it's Gotham City. We know it's dark shadowy. Yeah. I don't have to, over, you know, overburden it with description, but I do have to, you know, think a few steps ahead to make sure that, you know, everybody has something to say and a, and a movement to do. Once it's it's almost like uh, writing a choose your own uh, ending novel. One of yes, those. absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm glad I read a lot of those choose your own, your own adventure books when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I had a couple of jealous coworkers and a couple yeah. of jealous friends that I was going to be able to talk to you with today. Okay. So, um, did you end Gotham City Sirens the way you wanted to? You know, Gotham City Sirens was a real fun book to write, and I and I in hindsight, I don't know, I I, I took on an awful lot of work around that time, and I think and I had to kind of move off the book in order to devote to, to devote more time to a few other things. So I had the setup in mind. I really didn't have an end game in mind. And I felt that when I passed the book along, it was in very good hands. So, you know, I, I was just looking forward to seeing what the writers did with yeah. it in that case. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, were there any other characters you wanted to bring into that series that maybe you didn't get a chance to? In Gotham City Sirens? Yes. Uh, you know, I, you know the, the book is so packed. It's Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and Catwoman. It was actually kind of, you know, a challenge finding a story that accommodated all three of them because Poison Ivy is so powerful and she, you know, she can overcome just about any opponent. Catwoman is really, you know, the loner of the group and and she has this connection to Batman. Harley Quinn's a loose cannon. So it was really like, how can I bring in villains that challenge them or really, you know, um, add something to the group? So if I had if I had stayed with the book a little longer, I think I would have brought in a few more female villains. I would have stretched up a little bit. I probably would have, um, I don't know, had some more rivalries going. At one point, um, Gail Simone and I talked about a team up between our two books about doing a Birds of Prey, um, Gotham City Sirens crossover. Uh-huh. That would have been a lot of fun, but our schedules just never accommodated yeah. it. And, and then you know, by the time I, I had moved off the book at that point, and then. Then they went through the jump start with everything else. So, you know, it's one of those things that probably will never be, unfortunately. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is another question from another friend of mine. Sure. Um, how much of Streets of Gotham did you incorporate into the game, if any? Again, very little of it. You know, more of a, an actual tone type of thing. Mm-hmm. At one point, um, when I was creating new characters, new villains for Streets of Gotham, we looked over them for the game. And we thought, well, maybe we'll put thought the characters themselves, little hints, little clues that those characters exist within that world. I did incorporate some of those characters into the graphic novel. There might be little, you know, things in the background here and there in, in, within the game. I'm not sure. The <laughs> Rocksteady guys are a little tricky. <laughs> but they like keeping up to date with what, um, you know, with what we're doing in the comics. Uh-huh. So, um, again, I just went for a general tone of it. I, with, with Streets of Gotham, I wanted to capture a feeling of Gotham City as this oppressive thing that kind of, that, that ordinary people and villains, and, he, and Batman himself, of course, were all kind of laboring under, but it was um, more designed to be standalone stories from the man in the street or the villain in the street's point of view. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of that feeling in here, but there are no really, it's not a direct continuation of the series. Mm-hmm. Now, um, some of the things that you've written over the years with comic sure. book related and not, I mean, we're talking about... You know, everything from Tiny Toon Adventures to Batman the Animated Series, sure. very diverse. What was your favorite project to work on? Well, the Batman the Animated Series was t- really terrific. I mean, there was a whole feeling at Warner Brothers at the time when we were starting in Tiny Toons that, you know, that we were that we were cutting our teeth on that show and kind of learning how to work, you know, in the old style animation units and working very closely with the voice artists and the musicians. It really was you know, the, the feel about how, how close we're going to come to working at, you know, a studio in the 40s where they're doing short cartoons. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, after we kind of cut our teeth on shows like that and Animaniacs, we moved on to Batman. And that was a lot of fun. You know, that, that was a great show. Um, a, a really wonderful experience working with some wonderful people. The only thing that comes near to it was about a year ago, I did a show for Cartoon Network called Tower Prep, mm-hmm. which was a show of my own making and my own vision and everything. And, um, 
unfortunately, we only did 13 episodes and they yanked us, but uh, it was so much fun and we had such a great cast and really terrific showrunner and writers that mm-hmm. I just, I love that show. So, right. you know, great okay. experience. Yep. And last question, um, yeah. what, what's next for you? What, what can the fans expect next? Who knows? I don't know what to expect <laughs> next. I'm working on some other animation projects, uh, not with Warner Brothers, but with another company and um, taking a break from comics for the time being. Uh, so, uh, pretty much devoting myself to animation if another game came up with this company i i think i would really love to do it again Mm -hmm. um i had so much fun working with them um that time and i'm just open to new things i think i'm gonna work more toward creating my own projects and i've got a few interesting things in the works i just don't want to talk about it right now all right makes sense well sir you're an absolute pleasure to talk to i thank you so much for your time tonight really appreciate it great love your work thank you very much